All right, guys, I have been struggling to make this freaking intro all morning, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, 1989 Chevrolet Corvette. Customer dropped it off. No third and fourth gear. The last video I did, we completely tore it down and established that it was the three and four clutch pack. Um, I went back to the valve body. I built the drums. I built the pump. So I'm going to demonstrate on how to stack all of that together in your transmission case today. And at the end, we'll put the valve body on it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And thank you so much for almost 20,000 subs. It means the world to me. I can't believe we're already at that milestone. Um, so thank you so much. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, we're going to change out the case bushing in one second. But you want to go ahead and get your seals on your low reverse piston. Um, you want to, you know, go over it and make sure there's no cracks or anything like that. These things do tend to crack, especially if they get cold um, out of the vehicle, sitting outside, um, often in sub-zero temperatures. I think I'm saying that right. You know, like if you're in Ohio in the middle of January and you've got two or three cores outside, those things are probably going to be junk by the time springtime comes. Yeah. Now here's your low reverse piston. Now all your seals here are square. Um, there's no actually, there's no lip on the end of them, like on the ones that go into the drum. So they just go straight on and it's flat on the outside there. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So yeah, something like that. That's got a lip on it, you see. These are just flat um, on the outside. There's no lip sticking up or down. And then you want to also verify that your spring perch is in good condition as well. This is my low reverse piston tool. Um, this compresses the spring down. You can get the snap ring in the case groove. Now there is a tooth on this piston here. You can see it right here. And that locks into the case down here. With your finger, we're going to get this case bushing out and replace it with a new one. I have my favorite flathead screwdriver to do this, so don't yell at me. I've been using this same screwdriver for like five years. And it works really good. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny because I have like a bunch of special tools that I've made specifically like for certain situations. And like every mechanic has that. So I don't, I don't get the whole, you got to use a specific hammer and you got to use a specific tool for everything. It's like, yeah, but if I build the transmission and I put it in and it works good, what do you... What's the difference? <laughs> now that other case bushing kind of just slid out of there. It wasn't in there too tight. So I'm just taking a little bit of Loctite on the outside of this bushing. Add some pressure and just get it started. You hear that change in pitch when you hit it? That means it's bottomed out. Change your case bushing out. Get a little bit of grease down here. Or that tooth goes to nine o'clock. Nice. Next is your lower reverse spring perch. That side's locked in, push up a bit. Let's see if we can get it this time. Nice. I'm really trying to get the best angles of this so it's a bit difficult, but. And just go around it, make sure it's inside of those tabs there on the spring perch. Next is your parking gear. And I like to get a little bit of grease on that bearing and make sure it's seated so it won't fall off. And go ahead and slide that in. There is a little lip here to hold it, but I still like to put just a tad bit of grease down just to make sure that this seats properly. This side has a little um, flange. Now this face is down. The flange locks into the parking gear. Your planetary. Nice. Low reverse clutch pack. This is a wavy and the bottom tooth here. 
you can see the little notch. Now that goes down and to the left, just a hair, you'll see. Now you can see where that notch is, right there at about six o'clock. Next is your first steel disc and a friction. Go ahead and alternate. And we can change this center support sprag out. There we go. Holding it to you like this, it should spin counterclockwise. Now I am going to update that anti-clunk spring for a case saver. It needs to straddle the anti-clunk spring or the case saver. It does not need to sit on top of it. Nice. Make sure it's flush over that bearing and on the bottom there. Your sun shell. Put a grease on the back of that sun shell. And four prong brass washer. I put the washer, or I put the bearing on top of the planetary here, a little bit of grease. two drums you want to gently set them in and then just twist back and forth kind of lift up and let it fall under its own weight jiggle it around now whenever it gets into place you should be able to lift up on the input shaft just a touch that feels good let's get the band in there it there that goes into the case and then this plug right here goes in just like that now make sure it doesn't fly out I really like to lube my seals up nice now push straight in. You don't want to get this into a crooked bind.
Now in your kit, you're gonna get two pump gaskets and you're gonna wanna use the one with the flange at the top left corner. Now this is for your old, um, I think it's 82 to 84 700R4. And these have the slits cut out for the vent tubes and just the proper updates, so. Now I have gotten away with using one of these a couple times, but I just, the book says not to, so. All right, two closes holes to the right side. You should make sure all these go in with your finger first and all your o-rings are on the bottom of these bolts you can run these down just don't tighten them put the impact This is a pretty crucial part here. If you don't change these out, they will leak. Not a whole lot. Hook faces toward your valve body and your stem hooks right into the front there like that. Walk that over. And then your castle nut here, it's keyed one way, and you can walk that, that's a 15 millimeter. Do -do. Fifties, you have to lock tight them. Now I run all of these bolts in by finger before I tighten anything down. Somebody tagged me in a TikTok video saying that I didn't know that there was alignment holes on a 700R4 and I've just never used them, never had a problem, never had anything go wrong in that aspect. So. Thank you. 
Like even this auxiliary port's loose still. That's how I like to build them. Everything is loose and free up until the very end. Everything's still loose. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my auxiliary port first. My accumulator cap. And then four corners of this valve body here. No binding whatsoever. Now go ahead and walk the other ones in. 